this is not a straightforward case study, like uh, kind of like I suspected. So I want to unplug the upstream air fuel sensor on bank two and see if the computer will use the downstream to correct if it even goes into closed loop. And then um, you know, see how it drives. Because this discrepancy is definitely does not make sense. Why is one showing stoichiometric, the other one's completely lean? Unless there's an exhaust leak, which definitely doesn't sound like there's any exhaust leaks. Pretty crazy. Okay, so sensor is disconnected on bank two, sensor one. See what happens. So obviously uh, milliamps are stuck at zero now. And look, bank two is now 0 0.9. So it's kind of trying to save itself. Running in default mode. Let's drive it. It might be using the sensors from bank one to run bank two. Still drives great. So engine braking definitely works. 0 0.9. So it's so now bank two is running rich. Downstream sensor is stuck at 0 0.9. Okay, so by unplugging that sensor, we set a sensor heater circuit, bank two sensor one, and an O2 sensor positive current trim circuit low, bank two sensor one, as expected. So let's um, plug it back in and see if the data comes back to the previous state. All right, so the only good test I can think of is to swap the known good bank one air fuel ratio sensor with the suspected miscalibrated bank two upstream. Let's look at the downstreams. Bank 2 is definitely running lean because we're taking fuel away, minus 10% in the long term. But the milliamps here, the computer's trying to keep those near zero to maintain sto stoichiometric. There's not much else it could be, either that or the engine computer sensing circuit. So I got the sensor out. It does look OEM. It actually says, uh, NTK made in Japan brand spanking new and the one I pull out of the back was the original one it was a lot tighter so I put that one in here we'll put the new one in the back look at the data see if anything changes all right sensors are swapped around place your bets now what's gonna happen are the fuel trims gonna reverse or not I kinda doubt it but this is easier than The next easiest check, I guess. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we have 14% fuel trim on bank two now. Long term is minus 10. Short term bank one is about seven. Let, let's let it stabilize. I'm going to take it for another trip, test drive. You can see uh, bank one is still, the downstream is going up. Bank two downstream is stuck at one volt, or point one. Now let's, let's, let's take it for a spin because right now it's, it's not stabilized yet. So same exact data with the sensor swapped around. See bank one, the switching rate is faster and smoother. This one adds fuel, boom, and then subtracts. 
it's a lot slower and overall the downstream doesn't like that because it's just reading lean all the time something's wrong here could it be a fuel injector that's dripping or something and then the other cylinders are running too lean because the computer subtracting fuel this is a really hard diagnosis so we're doing a smoke check on the intake very small I don't see any smoke anywhere this thing is tight <clears throat> I actually talked to my friend Keith DeFazio at New Level Auto told him the symptoms sent him some pictures and he agreed with me. Injector drop test on the front bank and uh, check the intake for leaks right at the front bank cylinders. So smoke check does not show anything. This intake manifold is tight. So next up fuel injector drop test. Hopefully we'll find something interesting. Let's get back to this Mazda CX-9 with a check engine light and a fuel trim imbalance code on bank two. So what do we rule out so far? It's not a sensor issue. We can trust the air fuel ratio sensors. We can trust, uh, trust the oxygen sensors. That's key. That can definitely send you down a rabbit hole if you blindly trust the sensors and you know follow that false data that can get you into trouble. But we ruled that out. Um, so now what are the possibilities that can just be affecting bank two? It could be anything from a timing problem, maybe a you know shifted cam or something. Uh, not likely. It could be an intake manifold leak at one of the ports causing a mixture uh, problem on bank two. Rule that out. There's uh, absolutely no smoke leaking anywhere on the intake. Uh, what's next? Fuel delivery. So fuel injector could be a clogged fuel injector or one that's spraying incorrectly. Uh, possibility, I mean it's a low miles car but um, not out of the question so we have to check that next. So what I want to do is remove the spark plugs from bank two. Just do a visual inspection on those and then the car is nice and cool now. We'll plumb in a fuel pressure gauge and do a classic fuel injector flow test with a little pulse tool to see if these injectors are flowing evenly. We can compare it to an injector on bank one. I think I can get to like that one right there. So that's my game plan. And let's see what we find anything interesting. All right, let's get these spark plugs out of here. Just want to do a visual inspection. Spark plug number six. Looks nice and clean. Maybe a bit worn on the ground electrode. Okay. Spark plug number four. About the same. Spark plug number two, you know, maybe a hair darker than four and six, but not bad. So let's do an injector drop test. So for the fuel gauge, I'm using the SURNR Deluxe Fuel Injection Pressure Test Kit. Amazing kit, comes with mostly all the adapters that you'll ever need, and on this Ford. You don't have a Schrader valve, so you have to use a couple adapters and this T. And that goes to our gauge. Let's just fire up the car and see what fuel pressure it has when it's running. So key on. Okay. About 55 to 60 PSI. 
and it looks like it's holding just fine so we are ready to do our fuel pressure test okay so we're ready to do our injector uh, drop test starting with we'll start over here six four and then two I'm using the OTC electronic fuel injector tester so it has a power and ground of its own and then on this connector it sends out a power and ground through some adapter leads to the injector. So I have the injector unplugged and we're just going to energize that injector with the tool. And first let's turn on the fuel pump with the bi-directional control. Why can't I turn on the fuel pump? Um, we can just turn the key on and off, make sure we're starting with a good reading. Pulse the injector, see what the drop is. Alright, let's prime the pump just using the key. Okay, so we're starting at about 55. Pulse the injector. 30. So 55, number 6 went down to 30. Okay, great. Let's move the pulser tool to the next injector, repeat the process. So one more time on injector number six. Very consistent, 55 to 30. All right, injector number four is connected, starting at 55. About 30, perfect. I'm happy with that. And number two, this is kind of the moment of truth, either we get it right or we'll be still not sure and there has to be a problem with number number two this spark plug was dark so let's prime it Five. Ooh, wow, it dropped to 26. Bingo, we have injector number two flowing too much. That makes perfect sense. The spark plug's a little black. Computer tries to compensate, takes the fuel away, get negative fuel trims, and then cylinders number four and six start running lean, causing that downstream oxygen sensor to just read lean. That's, that's cool, and that's why the oscillation of the upstream air fuel ratio sensor was kind of, you know, not as smooth and not as quick as bank one. Makes perfect sense. Let's do that one more time. So we're down to 27. Huge difference. Or 26. So 30, 30, 26. Bad. It's flowing too much. Interesting how uh, usually injectors get clogged and they flow too little and you get lean codes. Well, not in this case. Uh, and it's really neat that the computer is smart enough to pick up a fuel in, you know ratio imbalance between cylinders using logic even though you think it could only pick up a bank specific issue in this case that that's neat that's exactly what the code description said but in the flow chart they had you checking all kinds of stuff that's not related to even a specific bank like fuel pressure you know purge solenoid all this all this stuff um, so that's the end of the diagnosis we need to replace the fuel injector on cylinder number two uh, if the customer wants me to do that, I assume they will. We'll uh, do a follow-up, but not not an easy diagnosis. I mean, I mean, you saw how many shops this car's been to. Just for a check engine light, no real drivability problems. Um, but that I'm, I've never seen this failure before. Uh, but again, using logic, you have to trust your tests. There has to be an explanation, and the last test we did, 
proved it. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.